heck of a lot of fun Jeannie Robertson Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun Jeannie Robertson And we are going to have a heck of a lot of fun today with my guest, Jason Hewlett. This is Jeannie, and welcome to the back porch once again. You will notice a few changes. For the past month, started in Thanksgiving, I think, this whole table was decorated, and then we kept getting further and further till I was almost pushed into the camera with Christmas decorations. They are all down, except I maybe have this poinsettia that just arrived from friend in Oklahoma and we are we're moving on folks and next week on uh, let me tell you this now I will be on the Grand Ole Opry on Friday night and Saturday night and we'll be staying with the Nashville people and so on Saturday we will be broadcasting from not their porch but if it's warm enough their deck and if not we'll just have to find somewhere else in their house so put that down also, today we're going to be giving a lot of prizes like we always do. I love to give prizes. If you didn't get what you want for Christmas, now may be your chance. But all of these thousands of names that we've accumulated since March, after today, we're dumping them. We're starting over in the new year. I'll have all of you who write a question next week post a question and it'll be about me, I guess. And because I'm the one that'll be being interviewed next week, I'll be interviewing myself. We'll start over. And let me tell you why these things have gotten out of hand. And we had one person here that had more people, Mark Lowry, that had more than we have here. There are thousands. And here's the problem with it. When your name is pulled, we tell you that you have won and to get in touch with Tony and tell us what you want of all the various stuff we have. If a person is not listening right then or doesn't listen to the YouTube clip or the Facebook clip uh, later in the week, they never get the words that they run, or, excuse me, won. So we're taking everything down in numbers, but your odds of winning are going to go way up for next Saturday. If I were you and I really wanted to win something next Saturday, I would ask a question, one that maybe you've asked before and I didn't pull it out of the yellow bucket. And you can get and look at next Saturday how few people will be in the in the draw bag on the show next Saturday on the 2nd of January. So let's see, that's an announcement. Second is all of you that ordered copies of the new product that, yes, should have come out in October or November, but it didn't. And we're, we're tired of hearing about it, aren't we, Patrick? <laughs> because it did come out last week. This is the seven CD audio book. Seven, it's seven hours and 20 minutes. I want to compliment somebody that's on the porch with me today as she is every Saturday. Tony has all of these packages ready to go with your orders, even though we said you will not get it by Christmas, you're not going to get it by Christmas. And she kept sending everything out. And and Tony, you're up, you're caught up to date, aren't you? We, we are up to date. If you've ordered previously, you have your order. Um, for whatever you ordered, whether it was the new book or anything else. All the orders are out. One exception, we had a late order last night that you've got to sign for someone's birthday. Okay. And as soon as you do, that'll be in the mail. And everything's in the mail. Everything that comes in today, if, if you order today, of course, we'll get it out right away as well. But if you ordered last week, it's in the mail. So I don't okay. know if anybody has actually received them yet, but well, they will the, be getting them. A couple of things, and that is, were they sent first class? Oh, U.S. first place priority, right. mm -hmm. but it's all running a little bit slower right now, y'all. So be patient. And when you get them, if there is a problem with anything, your CD is cracked, your DVD is anything, get in touch with Tony. Sure, we we <laughs> so, will make it right. We are we we will we be will happy to. It. We give great customer service. Tony <laughs> with an I T O N I at genierobertson.com and Jeannie does not, as you know, have an I. But, uh, Tony, you're going to Auburn tomorrow, aren't you? Uh, I, we will be out of town for a couple of days, yeah. Okay, but we'll so, be back in midweek, and we'll, we'll get them out. I'll get the orders out as soon as we get back. And when somebody receives one of these new items, or because you see these in DVDs, we send those out every day. 
So when you do get one of these, will you let us know that somebody has gotten it because it's it's slow? Let me see if there's any now, other logistical. Does thing. Pat, yes, what about the download one? Do you need to tell them something? Patrick. So the downloadable version is coming any minute now. Okay. We are very close. Um, been talking to the guys and they're excited about um, the launch and it should happen this week. Okay. So the deal is the launch is going to happen this week. So the deal is, because this has gotten everybody confused, you could get the first edition when it had errors in it, but it was the first edition. And some of you required getting that first edition, even though we were correcting the errors. Or you could get the book, paperback form, and read it and enjoy it. Or you could get the audio version on the seven, is this getting confusing enough? The seven uh, CDs, and it's seven hours, 20 minutes. But apparently launching at any second now, I'd say Monday, uh, you will be able to download the entire audio version of anything else that anybody's got. Um, do you see something that you haven't seen before on the porch? Make sure, I do not have another elf on the shelf hidden. We gave, <laughs> we gave that up because Christmas is over. Plus you said that the elf did not look like an elf. It so, was a pitiful elf, but okay. It was a pitiful <laughs> elf, but we had a great Christmas here. Many of you have already written today to say, what did you get as a gift? Let me tell you something interesting. We don't give gifts. Left Brain and I, uh, we went through that when he put a $5 limit on it and then went to $7.50 and eventually $10. Then when he had that bike that he rented instead of buy for me, that was it. We haven't given gifts since then. We just try to give to other people. But many of you sent me Christmas cards. You sent me candy. Dorothy, you sent me three or four pieces of that rum cake that I'm surprised the whole post office system hadn't slowed down because of the amount of rum in that cake. I've, those pieces are gone. And uh, candy from Christine and Lee. So many of you have been. I got a new beaver. So a st little stuffed beaver. He's over there. So I just want to thank y'all for making and your your cards and everything so happy for here for us for Christmas. But as far as did I get diamond earrings and all that kind of stuff, I don't know where I'd put it when it was all over and left brain and I just smiled at each other and try to give to other folks. And um, you had three children in the mix though, right, Patrick? In your place. You don't you don't wake up and say no presents this year. <laughs> no, 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 no. That'd be a dangerous thing to say in our yeah, house. <laughs> it would be. Okay, let me tell you about our guest today. And this young man, to be able to come on this holiday weekend, you'll never know how much I appreciate it, Jason. It's Jason Hewlett from Utah. And Jason, I've been playing him all week on my Facebook page. He has to be one of the most talented people. No offense to anybody listening that we've ever had on the show with his variety of skills. Some people say, oh, he's the impersonator. He's the, imp the impressionist, but he's so much more than that. He's, he's an impersonator. He is a talented entertainer. He's had all kinds of opportunities. I hope he'll tell us about, and he can do so many things. And he's also a professional speaker with a real good message, the promise. And he's also my friend. Welcome, Jason Hewlett. Where are you? Thank Yay, you. Jason. Yay. Get, give some, can you give some applause for laughter or something? <laughs> and you are in your home in Utah in what, you, what I say is an unbelievable studio. Is that right? I am. I'm here in Utah. It's wonderful to see you on your back porch. I'm glad you're well. Merry Christmas post Christmas. Wow. We're doing this. It's great. I know, it. but you are in. I have to tell my people, uh, they've watched you all week. And then the day I posted a summary of many of your impersonations, and they've asked all these questions, and I've got, and they've asked some good ones. But I just have to say that when you when you go to speak, you just knock their head off because they think a regular speaker is going to get up and tell them something, and they should maybe take notes. And then you take the stage and look out. I think that's the way I would have to describe your performances. 
What do well, you think about that? You're sweet. Uh, yeah, the truth is they do think they're getting a speech and I do like to deliver a message, of course, but I'm getting up on that stage to make them laugh, to have them think, but also to really enjoy themselves. So I'm going to be doing faces and music and impersonations, anything to get their hearts to open up to my message in their mind. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm doing anything from the Bee Gees, you know, all the way to, uh, you know, to, to Elton John. And so I'm going, la, 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 la. And everybody's going, is this a speech? And they're laughing and clapping along. And uh, it really turns into a fun show experience. And people really are excited about it. So I thought maybe even today we could do some of the music that people enjoy from my right, act. You want to kick it off with one or two and, and then I'll start asking these questions? Well, sure. Let me see if I can cue something up that would be good for everybody. I mean, well, I, I was talking about the Bee Gees. Let's try the Bee Gees. Let's see here. Is it too early for the Bee Gees? No. <laughs> Not in North Carolina. <laughs> okay, it goes like this. Here we go. Well, you can tell by the way I sing this song. I'm singing high, but not for long. I could try to sing so high. I could make a big dog cry. Yes, I would sing so high tonight. Breaking the drums left and right. You could try to understand how it could be that I'm a man. Time to be fancy, do this with the hands. You sing your way high, you sing your way high. We're gonna keep on singing until it's a bleed on our sad life. Stay alive, ha 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 ha. Stay alive, stay alive, ha 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 ha. Stay alive. <laughs> All right, there we are, the Bee Gees. So you Thank have you. Four children in another room that are accustomed to hearing you, and they don't think anything about it. They're like that. Dad must be just doing work in there. <laughs> I know. Show them how you got started. Uh, um, well, how you found out at age five and, and further, how you had a little bit of a gift. Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I found out early on I was different from everyone else. I, I got on the school bus five years old and somebody looked at me and said, your mouth is huge. And I was like, my mouth is huge. I didn't realize I was different, but I was. And, and I showed him that, yeah. <laughs> my mouth is huge <laughs> it's really huge i guess but uh, here's here's a better angle let's do the gopro angle here's here's the better shot he said your mouth is huge i went ah. <laughs> okay that that was too close but no and then he said hey sit with us this will be fun so all the way to school he would tap me on the shoulder when someone would walk on the bus and say do that thing with your mouth and i'd go ha ah, ha and everyone was like ha ah. so i became known as the kid with the big mouth and then eventually uh you know by the by the time i was just a little bit older when i went to the dentist the dentist said that i had a big mouth cuz he said open wide and i went ah okay that's <laughs> enough of that angle but he said when he started to work on me he realized that i had control over my face and so i'm going to show you with this angle I found out that I could control this lip and the dentist said, well, if you can do that, what else can you do? And, and I realized I could do, I could do both sides. And that was really kind of weird, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure your, your viewers are like, Jeannie, who have you brought to us today? <laughs> <laughs> but the dentist said, if you can do both sides, you should be able to do more stuff. So I practiced the lip wave like the ocean. Oh yeah. I practiced my eyebrows as well, and I could combine them both. And I, I know that's weird, but that became the thing that makes me unique. And my dentist actually said, hey, that's your gift. And I was like, this is my gift, you know? And so I'm grateful for a dentist who saw something unique in me. And at the same time, it's allowed me to make a living, Jeannie, just being able to do my faces and the fact that I share them with people, they get a kick out of it. You can imagine how fun it is for me to be able to do faces like this. I mean, on every Zoom call I get on, I go, hey, can you guys hear me okay? And there's my <laughs> mouth matching up with the words. <laughs> then when did you learn to do your nose too? 
You hit the nail. Oh yeah, the no the nose took me uh, <laughs> that took me seven years to figure out the nose thing, and that's a very weird trick, isn't it? I don't know if there's anybody around that can do that, but I I that do took it again, seven do years. It again. Yeah. That took seven years, Jeannie. <laughs> I oh. love that Jeannie Robertson is laughing at Jason <laughs> Hewitt. That makes me happy. <laughs> I don't know how you do that stuff. But, but you're more, because I've seen you sit down at the piano and, in a, and do Elton John. And I've seen you play the guitar and do somebody. So it's not just the facial movements and the things that you do. You're uninhibited and you're talented, too. So let me, I've got, let me ask you some of these questions. See the smiley bucket? He has a smiley face. Like, like you, almost everything in this house was given to me after a speech. This was the centerpiece with some flowers in it, and it was a lovely banquet. And so, all right, here we go. Okay, <laughs> these are questions sent by my friends. Okay. Thank, this has nothing to do with you. I, ha, I could not believe about it. All. Sharon Shell Ricks. Thanks, Jeannie, for helping us see the humor during the pandemic. I have some of your DVDs, books. Try to never miss Saturday session. Sometime I have to watch it later in the day because we like to go out for lunch. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> That's a great question. I'll tell you, Sharon, Jeannie, right, I love that, that you're doing this during there. the pandemic. You're so awesome. I know. One, I've seen some of these because we started laughing. You are on the Saturday gift that keeps... Okay, I must be in the wrong section of the book. It keeps on giving. All right, let's just see what this one is right here. Someone, <laughs> while we're on your face, someone wants to know if you can wiggle your ears. He's, he's I, I, oh, okay. I, I, can, I, I can, but, you know, on, on camera here, you can barely see it. So it's just, like, not enough to really point out, you know? That's why the, the, the face stuff is so significant, you know what I mean? <laughs> Did one of y'all come and take my questions out that these people are being so nice to send? I don't know. They asked me no questions, Jeannie. I am the opposite of Mark Lowry, who I saw two weeks oh, ago. Yeah. They, they, they sent 10,000 questions for Mark. And for me, they're like, you know, let's just watch him do some weird stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, here's a good one. Madeline, M-A-D-E-L-L-E-N, Spady, S-P-A-E-T-E. -E. I'm sure I said that wrong, Madeline. I'm sorry. How long does it take you to really capture the voice of one of your chosen celebrities? Great question. Yeah. I mean, some of them come automatically quick, just like the Bee Gees is such an iconic, but also almost silly sounding voice. So for me, that was easy. Uh, but then there are other voices that took years to even come close, such as uh, I would say like a Bob Dylan, for example. Bob Dylan has a very distinct sound that people really know well. And so if I don't do it well, they get upset. And so, yeah, I would, I would study a lot with a lot of artists. In, in fact, Elton John was a very tough voice as well. And, and I was an impersonator for Elton John at the Las Vegas Legends in Concert for a year. And that was a fun job because I'd come on stage and I would start as the young Elton John because his voice was different in the 70s than it was in the 80s and 90s. And so I would come out on stage and I'd play the piano and I'd say, goodbye, no Jean, though I never knew you at all. You know, and I'd do that thing. And then I'd sing like, uh, I remember when a rock was young, me and Susie had so much fun. And I'd do those fun high songs that he did. And then I would switch my costume on stage and I'd put on the elderly, if you will, Elton John, the older Elton John from the 90s, which was a full transformation with my hair, my costume. Obviously, I didn't have a beard back then. And I would, I would then go into his music where he won his first Grammy, which was in 1994, 24 years into his career. He finally won his first Grammy. And I'd sit at the piano and I'd sing, uh, you know, uh, there's a calm surrender to the rush of day. Can you feel the love tonight? And everybody would be like, wow, he does sound different from all of those decades. And the, the voice was tough for me to figure out because at first I was thinking he's from England. So I have to have an accent, you know, la, 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 la. But then I read an article that said he combines his English accent with a Nashville country sound. 
I found that interesting. And he has that twang in his voice. If you hear his voice that way, you start to realize that that's what he's always done with his voice. He'd say, Hold me close, a time to dance, count the headlights on the highway. So he sounded very kind of twang yeah. country in there with the English accent. That's what his Americanized sound was. And uh, so that's, a, that's maybe a, a little lesson for somebody who's interested in how a voice comes about. Well, you know, I, I, I try to study as many things as I could about you, This, even though we were friends and I've seen you perform several times. But you did a very clever thing in one of your shows. You said you were starting with um, older people, celebrities, and then you and you told the people right then, and we will move into, I mean, you all the way up to Madonna, I think. But you started your first character, well, you had the handkerchief and you did, which was wonderful. But you you played left brain. It's my husband, Jerry. You know him as Jerry. Everybody else knows him as left brain. You played his favorite person and his daughter. You know who that would be if you're going to sing, his fa sing the man and the daughter? Oh, Nat King Cole, Natalie Cole. Sure. Yeah. That one? Unforgettable. Yes. Oh, I love that song. Should we try it even at this yes, early I hour? Yes, I want you just for left brain. <clears throat> So this is for Jerry, and we, we hope he's doing well. I, I, I miss him. I haven't seen you in years, Jerry. But Nat King Cole, a very fine, beautiful voice, mixed with his daughter's voice, a very high, uh, different voice, but still very similar because they're related. So let's see if we can make this work here. Unforgettable, that's what you are. Natalie. Unforgettable, though near or far. That's why, darling, it's incredible. That someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable too. Ladies and gentlemen, Nat King Cole, Natalie Cole. Yay! Oh, Left Frame will love that. He will. He just thinks Nat King Cole. He doesn't know Garth Brooks, but he knows Nat King Cole. Oh. And I've got a story about that too. <laughs> uh, when you one of the people ask, have you ever, as a child, when you first started doing imitations, or later now as an adult, I will add, gotten in trouble because you started imitating, or have you been just talking to people and start wiggling your nose? I mean, I think <laughs> sure. Sure, that's funny. Um, you know, I one time got to open for The Temptations. Oh, wow. And that was exciting because I am a huge Motown fan. So I love Motown music, everything from Smokey Robinson to Diana Ross, Stevie Wonder. And when I got to open for The Temptations, I remember I was out on the stage doing my warm up uh, to get ready for the show before the audience came. And so I started into my Motown tribute of all those artists. And then I went for it and I did my Temptations impression, <laughs> which was kind of going out on a limb. I'm, I'm very much unknown still in the performing world, but I was important enough to open for the Temptations. So I, I, I hadn't met them either. And I started to do the impression. So it, the song, you know, it goes, it was the 3rd of September. Oh, pay hold ho, here's remember. Yes, I will. And that was the day that my daddy died. And Papa was a rolling stone. Oh, well, well. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, all he left us was alone. Oh, yes, then, Mama. Oh, Papa was a rolling stone. And then all of a sudden, the manager came running out on stage. And he goes, are you doing that? And I said, yeah. And he goes, you cannot do that song during this show. <laughs> and I said, I wasn't going to, I was just messing around. 
and he <laughs> <Yeah>. said, <laughs> and he said, the guys are all back there freaking out, wondering who's doing that. And we didn't realize it was one person. And they said, don't do that during the show. That's our biggest hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love so it. that was, you that was you a were funny just one for sure. Yeah. So they told yeah. you to stop. Well, that, well, there you go. They, actually, then they, then they let me come back to the dressing room, which they didn't want to have anyone back there. I got to meet them all. They were like, are you really doing those voices? You're from Utah. What's going on? You know, and I'm like, Papa was a rolling stone. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, who are you, man? And uh, so that was fun. And I, I mean, uh, I, I haven't necessarily gotten in trouble with people, but I have had great compliments, you know, especially from uh, I, I did an event in Michigan a few years back and I was doing an impression of Journey and apparently the person who did their lights and sound for years was there the the actual journey band that guy was there and he came back after and he said i've never heard anyone sound like journey how did you do that it was very very nice compliments not much trouble though i think you asked about the nose wiggle too Jeannie. Uh, i know, <laughs> I know. Uh, you, you know then <laughs> you ever just walk in somewhere and start doing your nose wiggle i would go to I, I have to be careful because people are very, you know, they're very sensitive to not, uh, they, they might think I have a problem. So if I'm walking up to somebody and I'm like, hey, I have a question for you, you know, <laughs> it's just too out of context. <laughs> so what I, what I do, however, is I like to share it as the promise. I say, it's my gift, my promise that I can share it with somebody or I can hide it. So if I'm at a restaurant, I can either make someone's day or keep it to myself. So if a waiter walks up and says, hey, what will you have? I could just say I'll have a salad or I can keep the promise to make someone's day with that which only I have. And I say, instead, I say, hey, you know, I'd like some lettuce and <laughs> maybe a carrot. Do you have a carrot? No. And then they're like, is this for real? And I go, yeah, I'm just messing with you. I just want to put a smile on your face. And then they go, dude, I'm going to go get the entire wait staff you're getting your meal for free yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but i think it's fascinating uh, people ask me all the time or they would say to left brain or they say to tony is she funny like that at home all the time like i jump out of bed in the morning and start telling the stories so do they say to you but if some idea hits you and you're working at home you gotta some of your some of your impersonations are loud like a Godzilla or whatever it is you do, all of those, you could scare your children. I love it. Godzilla, yeah, that's close. It's, uh, so this was the Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. Yeah. And, and the kids do love that one. That's my, my raptor impression. So I just go like that. I do a Jack Nicholson face, essentially. And then I, and then I just go, ah, ah. and I start running around. <laughs> you know, so they're not they're not sure scared not. about it anymore. They're teenagers now, so they're just ultimately embarrassed at all times of dad, you know. <laughs> but well, no, you know, but the, let me explain to them at the National Speakers Association convention, we have a youth program and we we bring our and the theory is that we travel so much it would be nice if we could bring our own children to our convention. Then when we get there, we dump them into the youth program and, and they have people come in and entertain us. And you always know when you've entertained because they come out trying to do like you and they can't do it, but they love it. So thanks for giving your time on that kind of thing. Yeah, there it is. The Raptor thing has been a, it's been a real flagship for me and it's been silly and fun, but you were asking, you know, about doing all of this in my home. I mean, obviously, in the quarantine, I've been home the whole time <laughs> for the last, what, 10 months or whatever. But I know that when I come home, that's my chance to just relax, be myself. I, I don't say that I'm Jekyll and Hyde on and off stage, but I am, I am ramping down the energy. I'm not an 11 all the time, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah. I know when I read Sammy Davis Jr.'s uh, you know, autobiography, he talks about every time he'd come home after a show, after doing f five hours of performing with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, 
he'd come home and he still had to perform. Like he would open the fridge, the light would come on, he'd do 10 minutes for the ham, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I'm Listen not that everybody. guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, I'll come home, I'll relax. But if something's funny, obviously I do that thing because that's my signature moves. That's my gift, uh, just like yourself. But if you're always on, 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 it's exhausting to yourself, to your family, others. So instead I just pull back and I do my thing. And then when it's funny, then we strike when the iron's hot, right? But, but you, one time y'all came to the speaker's convention from utah or somewhere to it way it in an rv the whole family drove the whole way you brought them was it to washington no, we, you're right orlando orlando, orlando. 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 We, we did that in washington dc and in orlando so we drove you, across you the whole country just on the way you know with your children <laughs> in van. You oh sure right? we 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 sing and we mess around they're all great let me show you a picture of them here's my little family oh. and uh, we have four kids they're in their teens now other than the little sky and so these are just you know they're amazing fun children and they they hang out with me and and they all have their gifts and talents a couple of them actually have actually uh received this as some kind of hereditary genetic thing i don't know how it's possible but some of them can do it and so, uh, yeah, this is our little brood of, of family. We got four kids and my beautiful wife, Tammy. So, yeah, yeah. everyone in the motorhome hanging out together. We're like, we're driving and we're going, we all live in a yellow quarantine, a yellow <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> I don't know. Just it's having fun. fun. All right, here's yeah. a question. So here you go. This is from Susie Garlock Angie, Angio Lilly. Angio L I L L I. Okay. Angel. Morning, Jason and Jeannie from chilly yet sunny South Florida. I have a question. Does your mouth, <laughs> everybody's extremely interested, does your mouth ever freeze in cold weather and you can't get it unlocked? And it's, then your mother always say you, you, your face is going to freeze. You, you have that other look. So she wants to know if the weather is very cold in Utah or wherever you are, will your mouth freeze? Oh yeah, that's a funny question no one's ever asked me, but it is true. I have done events, and Jeannie knows this, where you're the early morning speaker at a cold <laughs> place, and you have to wake up very early and do all of these things with your face to get everything warmed up. So I'm doing everything I can. I mean, if somebody saw my warm-ups, they would be like, uh, this guy has lost his mind, but yeah, I have to go, because if I don't, I've done events where I've woken up and I haven't practiced moving my mouth and I'll be like, and then I did this funny thing with my mouth and I'm like, <laughs> ah, I didn't warm up. <laughs> it did not work. Yeah, my mom, did, I... my mom did warn me. Yes. She said, That'll, your mouth will stay like that if you keep... Because Jeannie, in, in grade school when I was a kid, I used to take my fist and try to put it in my mouth like a fool. And my mom would say, you're stretching your mouth. And I was like, I know. And she'd go, don't do that. So, yeah. Well, the other thing that I want to make sure that people know, you work clean. You are a family-friendly entertainer that they can go see, which I appreciate so much. And a lot of people do. They don't want to hear the bad words. They don't want to hear the sexual innuendos. So you can go out there for the whole show and um, and entertain people in, of every age. And you hit someone from their era. And it's uh, it's nice to see you work that way. Tony, did you have your hand up? Uh, just that a lot of people want to know if you do Elvis and if you do Louis Armstrong and if you do genie oh <laughs> oh so throw well, those louis, at you new louis armstrong do you have your do you have your handkerchief <laughs> yeah I, I i think i have something that could be a hanky but I, I, my elvis presley see there i call them the elvi there are so many elvises out there that have ruined it for everyone but elvis Elvis, you know, when I found out I could do the lift, I was like, well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready now, go get the one, don't you? Oh, oh, here my blue suede shoe. And so my Elvis is okay. But I found out that if I did a, an okay Elvis, it's not good enough. 
it has to be really good. So what I do is I just kind of do a parody of Elvis. I'll say Elvis, you know, before he was famous, he used to write uh, commercials. For example, he would, uh, you know, he would change instead of doing Hound Dog, he would do like a uh, uh, Punxsutawney Phil, you know, you ain't nothing but a groundhog, seeing your shadow all the time, oh, 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 you ain't nothing but a groundhog, and that's my way of getting away with it. But my real good impressions, in my opinion, are the ones that sound really pretty good, like Louis Armstrong. Let's do that one for you. Here we go. Oh, I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, oh yes, I love you, I hear babies cry, boo-boo, do -boo -boo, I watch them grow, <laughs> they're learning much more, yes, than I'll ever know, yes, and I think to myself, boo-boo, do -boo -boo, what a wonderful world, oh yeah. Yes, I think to myself, <laughs> what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah, Baba, do do da do da. All right, there's a little Louis Armstrong for you. Yeah, now, I admire you because you just said something as speakers. You said, this is not my best imitation of Elvis. That's one I have. There have been so many and so many out there. Just lay it out there. Be honest with the people. And there's just not a problem. Can you do me? Tell me the truth. If you weren't on this <laughs> show, if you would be somewhere trying to talk Southern. Can I do Jeannie Robertson? No, it is not good. It almost sounds like if... Uh... If somebody was really, really, really exhausted and trying to do a bad Southern impression, I cannot do Jeannie Robertson. <laughs> and by yeah. the way, I do not even have a hundred thousand hits on YouTube, let alone a hundred million <laughs> from a rocking chair. <laughs> well, and thank you for working that in. We didn't even have that plan. All right, let's give away some prizes real fast here because my people love love prizes so i'm going to reach down here myself and they can choose from the book the new book or you could choose the old ones but they don't we don't have any more of those somebody said they got three of my books for christmas and i thought holy cow because we tried to buy all those back didn't we those first ones <laughs> and then you can have cds dvds we will not give away in this drawing this big item we'll give away one of these in a little while you can get a left brain hat right here or anything else and the way you do it is if i call your name you call tony tony at jenny robertson and you tell her what you want and if you've already got it then it's a good opportunity to get a gift for somebody yeah, email me tony email. at jenny robertson.com and the winner the first person is rachel kane dunbar who says i can't wait for tomorrow but see we don't know if that was yesterday or if this was four months ago so now we're going to make it <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway if you know rachel kane k-a-i-n dunbar let her know she won something and now i'm going to reach down in here get this one. Oh, good thank you jason gonna go down in here not looking because they'll say you looked you looked you looked and this is another winner today okay and that is Half of a name cut off. I would say Kara Caldwell Linfesty, L-E-N-F-E-S-T-E-Y. -E -E and she loves the table. Okay, so there you go. You just won a prize. Oh, God. I've got to get up, go over here, and pull this one. I got it. Whoa, I'm going to fall. There's too many things around my feet. Oh, no, they're dropping. <laughs> All right, another prize. Okay, and then I want you, here we go, this is another winner, right here, Kylie Sullivan. Hi, I am from Alberta, Australia. Could you be up? Well, We well, know we have somebody on here from Scotland. <laughs> Would you do me a favor? Would you tell me you're attempting something Monday night that I attempted earlier this month? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> 
Jeannie, yours was so good. Don't no. say that. It was so good. I was like a fish out of water. Tell them what you're going to do Monday night. And I wish you well, but you're not going to do it. I went to Charleston and did a streaming show on stage there in the theater. You're doing it from your cubby hole right there. Tell us about yeah. it. Yeah. Your show was so great. You were in a live theater and with people there, although it was a very limited audience, but lots of people watching online like I was. And I wanted to do something like that for my audience as well. And so we've put together a show called Santa Got Run Over by a Raptor. <laughs> and so the, this show will be on December 28th. Excited for it because, yes, it will be from my house which obviously there will have to be this kind of, if, if I want someone to laugh, I have to. Oh, so you can get laughter. I have to cue you it up myself. <laughs> yeah, I got some laughs here. and But really, it mostly sounds like this when they're like, please welcome Jason Hewlett. And it's like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, thank you. Thank you. That's the virtual thing. But what we're going to do with my show, Jeannie, it'll be really cool. Uh, it'll just be me here doing comedy, music, impressions, as well as some pre-made videos my family has been working overtime to create. So I'm very excited about it. So it'll be a little bit of Christmas, and we'll make fun of some things about Christmas. We'll make fun of Zoom calls, and, and we'll laugh about some of the awkward things of the pandemic and and other ways we're not we're not like you know we're not making it negative it's all just about light and humor and fun and leading us into a nice 2021 and so yeah it's just from my house it'll be interesting not having an audience is okay with me because Jeannie, i uh, i've had plenty of audiences in front of me that didn't laugh either so that was good training <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect training found, for virtual events. You know, I'm on this radio show, show every week with Neil Steele, and radio guys, you do interact. But to not hear any response, I did not realize until Charleston how much, because on a radio show, you've got the other people that are there every day bantering. But uh, I'll tell you, it was just total silence. They told me, that I had 69 people in the audience. And then later they said, well, we didn't want to upset you, but it was only 42 or something like that. And I was oh. about, there weren't 69 <laughs> people out there. And then all these people. So, but you're going to sit right there. I am at home Monday night. So how do I get a ticket? How do people yeah. buy? Oh, there if you go. Jason, if you, it's, on the, it's on the, the page there. Patrick's so good. He's put it up there. It just... Go to my website, jasonhewlett.com, and right on the home page is a link to go get your ticket. And a lot of people have asked for the price, what is? what do I get? Is it per person? And no, just buy one for your whole household and everyone can watch. You could have a, a, a socially distanced uh, watch party as well if you want it at your house. So buy one ticket. You can watch it wherever you'd like, and it'll uh, it'll certainly be worth your time. And, I mean, seriously, what else is there to do? The week between Christmas and New Year's, <laughs> nothing. It's a good, so it's a good you, try, but, but the only thing is too is, uh, don't you get to watch it for forty eight hours? Mine, yeah, watch it for forty eight hours. Yep, just like yours. People could log in later and watch it, and even if you enjoyed it, you want to watch it again. I, I believe all of that's a possibility. So you know, I've never done this either, although I have done over one hundred events from this office since April for corporate events, associations, military, charity, education groups. I have yet to do a public style event like this. So this will just be me bringing okay, all I that I've learned question. together. Yeah. You got paid for those hundred events? We're missing the boat here, Patrick. We need to be doing some shows. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> but also keep in, mind, um, keep in mind, this is not something that they can just see on YouTube. This is, this is no. uh, customized content. So it's going to be a, Way to go. One I'm proud of, of you. I'm so proud of you. That's well, right. It's a it's a one time good. only event. And Jeannie, just so you know, like you were asking, I believe I have done at least 50 of those 100 were for free. And that was for education, military, healthcare workers, uh, others that are really struggling, um, people in you know rest homes and other places because they needed that. And then I've done many, many more that were heavily discounted 
in order to bring joy to people during a challenging time. And that's only possible because I had, I think, around 10 to 15 clients that paid me my normal fee. And that's what allows us to make a living like this, is to, uh, you know, to have clients that give us a fee that allows us to do free for others or charity. And so that's what we've done. It's been a really, a, a, it's know, been a busy uh, time, but it's been a great thing. With, uh, I go way back because this is 57th year of doing this, but uh, when I talk to my friends in Dallas, big town, big town, where do you live in Utah? Salt Lake City? Do you yep. live in Salt Lake? Big town, big town. Okay. And I would say to Joe Griffiths, uh, I would tell him I was speaking somewhere in Burlington and they would say, they paid you to speak in Burlington? And I said, no, I don't get paid to speak in Burlington because you're expected to give back to hospice. You're expected to give back to Habitat. And I'm the, you know, I'm a speaker. Patrick moved here and he's found out the same thing. But you do that because you do have the talent and it is your hometown. And then if you do those kind of things, you don't have to serve on committees. It's wonderful. <laughs> like you just, all right, let me ask you another question. What time do we have, Patrick? Oh, here's the one I pulled out. About 15 minutes. All right. Jeannie, you, this is L.S. Hales, H-A-L-E-S. Are you going to sing, Patrick? You want me to? Okay, get out your guitar. Okay, Jeannie, you have a lot of entertaining friends, and they are funny too. Why do you? Ha oh, why, where do you meet all of these people? <laughs> I would say, would you say that we all became friends at the National Speakers Association conventions? Sure did. Most totally, peculiar yeah. bunch of people. Did you know what Jerry said? And Jerry's not a jokester. Left brain. He may think things, but he ain't going to say them out loud. After one NSA convention, he said, you have to hurry through the lobby or you'll catch ego. <laughs> and said, and he, he's probably not far from right. But uh, everybody there has different talents. I could not begin to do what you do in but if there is a group, the one thing we have in common is we really do want the microphone. If, if there's a group, it's like, oh, do they have someone? I'll get up. Who else do they need? And when you have your conventions, uh, you've performed at the convention. I've been fortunate enough to do the same thing. And uh, it can help your career. And you meet all these nuts. People come to town and they'll say here comes some of Jeannie's nutty speaker friend but I like to hang around with people like that a lot of people that watch this show are the same way would you say it's NSA the where we met all of us that's where I met you and Patrick and everyone I'm so grateful for the National Speakers Association and you know Jeannie I I had been on the the bill with you at conventions through e even two decades ago where I was the after dinner entertainer and you were the morning keynote speaker. And I remember watching you before, you know, I would go on later that night and I'd watch you and say, this is what I want to become in the sense of somebody who's doing a keynote that's bringing humor and is teaching these people something. And so you were really the guiding light along with a couple of our other speaker friends who helped me shift my mind from after dinner entertainer guy only to can I be the morning keynote who brings a message who makes him laugh who keeps it fun and that's what Patrick has done as well and there are very few of us out there but I feel that you're the guiding light that showed us it's oh possible God. to make well, it all work so I'm all, no I'm old listen we just had <laughs> Randall Reader do you know Randall Reader in NSA yes Randall yes. Reader has made a career out of imitating who Twirling the um, Will, Rogers. Will Rogers. That's right, Will Rogers. Greatest. I mean, he looks so like good. him, he sounds like him. He had to study him for something, and he began to realize he could be Will Rogers. This guy is unbelievable. He just wrote and said, NSA is a great place to meet people. So, but it's, uh, I, I've i done banquets and keynotes and everything else, and so I don't know. And we try to tell people, if you have to throw in a bad words, and some of ours do, that's their style. But, and then to get them to laugh, are you really being funny? That's just what we say. Patrick, get ready to sing your song. I'm gonna pull out another question. I'm on a roll. I'm having too much fun on this day after Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Sue Church. 
hello from Wisconsin. So, when Jason gets Novocaine at the dentist, is his <laughs> is his gift gone, or does it get funnier? <laughs> I, I didn't make That's these questions up. Suture. That's funny. I've actually never had Novocaine. I've never had a cavity. And that's why I put that camera in my mouth earlier. But the truth is, if I had something like that, I'm sure it would be like one side of my face would work and the other would, would be like, hello, everybody. <laughs> so I don't um, know. This is just as a person who's interested in humor and studies it. You've seen Tim Conway's dentist routine. <laughs> That's Wait, the best of all time. Yeah, all, certainly. I think Tim Conway is, was the be, one of the best of all time. All right, here's another question. What are you doing there? Okay. All right. Okay. I'm so sorry. I've been missing out on Jason's humorous, hilarious humor. My question is, this is very important here. People don't understand about professional speakers, so I appreciate it. And this is from, oh, you've, I've cut off your name. It, her question is, have you ever performed in Michigan? <laughs> yes, I have. I, <laughs> in fact, I've performed there in the winter. Thank you very much. <laughs> Looks like a hand. And, and she said, if, if so, I can't wait till the COVID settles down enough for you to return. Isn't that great? In fact, one time, Jeannie, I landed in I landed in Detroit, and I had to be in Traverse City the next morning to speak to 700 youth. And Detroit to Traverse City's, uh, you know, a short flight, but I landed at, uh, a minute too late to catch my connection. And I landed at 9 p.m. I had to be on stage at 7 a.m. What do you think I did, Jeannie, in the middle of a snowstorm? You rented, I rented a car a, and got there. I rented a one-way rental car. I drove all night through the back roads of Michigan, where I had never been before, dodging the deer and everything. I pulled in at about 5 a.m. to Traverse City, did my gig, left the stage to a standing ovation, and flew home. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what you're describing is I would not want these nice people that follow me all the time to know some of the things I have done. I mean, the left brain would just die. We we wouldn't tell him what I would do well. And Tony got in it and she started saying, well, what was it? I said to you, if I could just get to Dallas, I can get to Odessa. And you said, no, you can't. You can't. I'll rent a car. Texas no, is can't. really, really big. I know. it. Okay, Patrick, sing us something. Show us your brand of humor on Okay. This. Uh, let's see if I can. There we go. So Jason and I have known each other for years and, um, to the National Speakers Association. And I think we really connected because we both use music in our in our presentations. Uh, I don't do impersonations, although a lot of people were saying that your Jeannie Robertson impression <laughs> sounded like a Patrick Henry impression. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason was asking me what I've been doing during the pandemic and uh, professionally regarding speaking. And I haven't been doing a, a ton of virtual uh, presentations, but I've really gone through a, a shift in, in my message and it started before the pandemic. And I read about a guy in New York um, who's recently passed away, but his name is William um, Helmreich. And he was a sociologist who walked every single street in New York city over 6,000 miles. And it took him over 20 years. And he wrote and recorded the conversations that he had with people along the way. And one thing that he said was that everybody's got a story worth telling. And so that really made an impression on me. And so I wrote this song that a lot of you have heard, but some of you may not have. Tell me about your life. I want to hear about your dog. Does he come round when you call him or just lay there like a log? Tell me about your kids. Oh, what are they into? Do they hang out in the woods till dark just like we used to do? I don't care about your politics or what China's going through. I don't want to talk religion. Or if you voted red or blue, tell me about you. I want to hear about your truck, all the scratches and the dents, 
storied imperfections, some cut too deep to fix tattoos and scars. Tell me where they all came from, written in the paint and stitches, proof of just how far you've come. I don't care about your politics or trade philosophy. I want to hear about your favorite song, how it came to be. Seems everybody's picking teams in a game we're bound to lose. Not sure I've got the answers, but no, it ain't on cable news. Tell me about you. All right, yay. yeah. Awesome, perfect. Thank it's you. It's a perfect song. Um, oh, right. listen to that applause. I know. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now this is tough. Jason, who is your favorite person or character to impersonate? And how many times I know people have asked you, but we want to know. Apparently, it's Patrick Henry. I mean, apparently, I sound <laughs> just like. <laughs> Sounding like Jeannie Robertson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my Which one favorite, is the home run? You know when you start, you're going to bring the house down. I mean, I, 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 the raptor thing is one. Uh, the, you know, the faces thing that I do is something fun. But I'll tell you, the Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas song seems to really blow people away. <laughs> and I've done that ever since my career began. It was one of my first bits, as we call them in comedy. And so, shall we do some... Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <clears throat> yeah, like this. You gotta do it. Here we go. <clears throat> Christmas, Christmas town is near. Town for towns and town for two. We think of our book at last. Every Christmas, every fast. Went up on that loop, that loop. Move around the hood, the hoop. We can hardly stand the road. Please, Christmas, don't be loud. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is this is a question that ties into it a little bit. Rosalind Forsyth question for Jason. Do you prefer, because you know, one of the clips I put up, you imitated the dentist utensils as well as people. Do you prefer people impersonations or sounds or which one? People or sounds? Oh, definitely the people, because that's just so nostalgic and so forth. But the sounds one really works well. You know, whether it's the dentist where it's... <laughs> I don't know why people think that's so great. I mean, it's just, to me, it's so simple. But the people one is a little bit tougher. But, um, you, know, you know, I've been doing voices of of things like that for years and then of course there was cartoon characters in my youth mickey mouse you know those kind of donald duck goofy you know like oh boy ha huh? hi everybody mickey mouse here ha huh? all right where's where's goofy oh where's mickey oh everybody where's donald so you know i don't know i guess everything works <laughs> so you realize i might could have been miss america if if i had any of your talent i said one time i said i could have won miss america and patrick said no you might have had a little better chance if you had talent but this <laughs> you're amazing okay the um uh promise you when i heard that you had come out with a whole new program called the promise i thought oh my gosh he's gone to religion this is going to be something that's not going to be funny. He's making, I thought, he's making a mistake. But now, after this week of really studying your book and seeing what you were doing, and remember we met, I was in Saint, uh, Salt Lake City with Norma Rose, um, and uh, you came to the dinner party that the chapter had for me, and I appreciated it so much. But can you sum up and tell these people about what the promise is? Yeah, the promise is simply your promise to the world to share your gifts, which Jeannie, you do that better than anybody that I know. It's the fact that all of us have what I call a signature move. And I've done the signature moves of the artist today from Louis Armstrong, I see friends shaking hands, to the Elvis Presley, to the Bee Gees. Everybody has a signature move. It's our gifts and our talents, and it's our promise to share that with the world. And I, I did, I wrote a book about it called The Promise to the One. 
and the one is yourself. Keeping promises to yourself and making sure that you share them with others is, uh, is of the essence. So hopefully as we go into the new year, everyone will be thinking about what they've promised themselves, not just setting a goal, but making a promise. And so that's what it's about. Not a religious thing, Jeannie, but it's certainly it's like, yeah, it's certainly more about living your best self and being, uh, you know, bringing your gifts to the world. Well, uh, I'm assuming it's going well for you. You do a lot of PR out on it when I get it. So I just thought I just got in my head that it was something else. And so I'm glad. Now, but are you saying everybody listening in here today might not do what you do or Patrick does or what I can do or what Tony, but they've got some sort of gift, whether it's just being nice to people? Exactly. And that's what's beautiful about everyone's promise. We all have something about us that makes us unique enough that we need to share with the world. And so if you can do this or you can do that, then you should share it. If you can be the person that's nice or write a letter or reach out to others, then do that. That's your promise to yourself and to the one, which is you. So, yeah, that's, the, that's what the promise is. Okay. And I like Patrick's approach to it. Tell me about you, not all about us all the time. Tell me about you. And it works well. Patrick, you got a question? Uh, just, just that if you want to give away any more prizes, oh, it's one o'clock. It. Okay, let's give some quick prizes away. We're going to start with regular prizes. All right, hang in there, Jason. But y'all make sure you go and, and, and to Jason's website, jasonhewlett.com, for tickets to his show on Monday. It's going to be a great event. I, what time is the show, Jason? What time? Seven o'clock Mountain Time, nine o'clock Eastern. So it'll be a little bit of a later show for those on the East Coast. But yeah, we wanted to make it so it was reasonable, and you know, in California as well, and with uh, six o'clock there. And Al okay. piped in and said that it was um, twenty dollars a ticket, and that's, that's good. Many so people should person if there's safely two cram into your house. I'm going. I'm going to get a ticket. I'm going to go to jasonhewlett.com. And make sure that I can figure it out. Because if I can't figure it out. And I'm going to come to Jeannie's house and watch it. So I'll have to pay 20 bucks. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> any chance? Oh, that's another question. This is a winner. Any chance this Chicago area may be on your schedule was our question. But Karen Weikert, W-I-E-K-E-R-T. Karen, you let Tony know what you want. We're going to give away two more regular gifts. And then we're going to give away the big new gift. I'm going to reach into here. See how cumbersome this is. And y'all don't forget, next week I'm supposed to be in Nashville with the Nashville people at their house. And this winner is Sue Ann, excuse me, Sue Ann Wall Coastar. C-O-S-Y-D-A-R. Yay, Sue Ann Wall. You choose what you want. We're going again to this bucket over here. <laughs> this is crazy. Remember, good odds next week. Send a question. So I just me. got a question. Is, is this is your show appropriate for a seven year old? And I can go ahead and say yes, it is. It Prefer really is for yeah. a seven year old. <laughs> it's probably better for the seven year old than the adult. <laughs> if they don't know Louis Armstrong, they get a kick out of your voice changing all of a sudden. All right, right. here's another winner, Caitlin Forster Edwards. Caitlin with C-A-I-T-L-Y-N, Forster Edwards. Now, the big prize. You can tell this is a more expensive item. This is the audio. So if you have somebody that really can't see the book or you're going on a long trip, driving from here to Utah or somewhere, then you want this. And this winner is going to still come out of all these, so they may not even call in. But the winner of this item right here is... Ta-da. <laughs> Sherry Harris. <laughs> you you lucky dog. This is Sherry Harris from Branson. I know right where she's from. Branson, Missouri. Her godchild goes to Elon. I took Isley to the airport three weeks ago to get her going home for Christmas. Should we disqualify Sherry? No. I don't that think was so. A fair either. Drawing. Way to go, Sherry. You better be listening. <laughs> Okay, and um, just to make sure, how do they get the, a copy of your book, The Promise? Well, they can go to jasonhewlett.com or they Everything can go to Amazon there. or Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. So that's where they can get it if they want. And uh, I would love for them to read it and enjoy it, and they will laugh. Also, I have the audio version as well, just like you've created yours. 
I have the audio as well, and that's been a fun one through the uh, through well, Audible. In your audio, also video. No, I do. No, we we no. do have we do have a video uh, to something that's coming out eventually. But the audio is the m me performing the book. So when I say the chipmunks were there, and I go Christmas, Christmas, then you get a performance. Okay. It's a fun audio book. I I would think just because of what you do. The audio would be pure, and I mean, you, if you can tell them in writing what you do, and that you can do all these people, but to hear it, that would be very good. People have said to me they're glad that because they told us we could hire a good Southern uh, person narrator, and we said we got one right here, right here, <laughs> and they like, and they like to hear my voice. I think they would doubly like to hear. Uh, the audio on that. Well, now that I've just talked everybody out of ours and you own to his, <laughs> that's what we're doing in NSA. Hey, y'all, see you next week. I hope from Nashville, and unless something else happens, we are thinking about the people there. And thank you to all the first responders that jumped in so quickly and did what they were supposed to do in Nashville. You make us all proud. We love you. And I'll tell you about this flag another time. It was going to be my show and tell. And I'll, it's carved. So we'll get that in another time. Um, other than that, it, this has been a great day. Tell the kids, hey. Tell uh, everybody you know, hey. And tell the group in Salt Lake City that was so nice to Norma Rose and I when we were there last year that we all said, hey. Especially Scott. He did nice things for me while I was there. Okay. Thank you. And I guess the next thing to say is Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Bye. See you, Jay. She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson.